Ken, the first question I'd like to ask is, uh, what is your earliest aviation memory? Probably my first trip in a Harvard in Centralia in 1952, because that was the first time I really had connected with aviation. I'd, I'd looked at airplanes, you know, watched them flying over before, but I'd never been involved with one. I was an instructor on T, I was an advanced flying instructor on T-33s in, in Portage and in those days it was sort of the heyday of NATO because we had three training bases uh, in uh, Manitoba, Portage, Gimli and McDonald and, and uh, it was a, a real mill, it was a, a you know a, a replay of the Commonwealth Air Training Plan of the Second World War except this time it was for uh, NATO and uh, a lot of activity, very busy days. So the, the squadrons coming through would be from all uh, all nations of NATO? Yes, they were. And, and uh, even I myself, I had, um, well, Canadian, Royal Air Force, uh, French Air Force, Norwegian, Danish. Uh, there were a couple of uh, uh, German Air Force. And so uh, a, a spectrum of people. And these are the first days of NATO as well? Yes, they were, because NATO, of course, uh, what, was born in the late 1940s, and so we're talking, you know, the mid-1950s, so it was uh, a relatively young organization at that time, it, and it, it was, uh, you know, at that time it was 14 nations, whereas now it's, what, 30-some, uh, I believe? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Including so, some Eastern Bloc. That exactly, are now like pe the people who were supposedly not our friends in those days. You were on a number of squadrons and you were... Uh... I, I was on two squadrons because I was I was one of these, I consider, very fortunate people. Shortly after I trained, I uh, ended up in Europe for my first time as, as a fighter pilot on a Sabre squadron. So I did a, a tour there. Then I went back, came back to Canada, did, did my instructing tour. Well, 10 years later, I'd become involved with the Starfighters and was back in Europe for another three and a half years. So... Uh, I ended up two tours in Europe and got to fly some very nice airplanes, and so I was very fortunate. Uh, can you take us through a, a, a mission on both types? Can you, uh, in terms of the Sabre and on your deployment? Right. They, they were completely different roles because the Sabres were day fighters. They were, if you think back to, for example, all the films and whatnot about the Battle of Britain, that's what we were doing in the Sabres because we were in the era where in order to get mad at somebody, you had to be able to see him because we didn't have radar controlled guns or anything like that. And so we were strictly day fighter people. The, now, in that vintage, we of course had the CF 100s and they were the all weather fighters. Now, by the time I got onto the 104s, we'd converted and, and uh, in the, the era when I was on the 104, we didn't do any fighter pilot stuff at all. We were, um, tactical uh, strike aircraft, low-level strike aircraft. We were bombers. So the Starfighter that had originally been designed as an interceptor, uh, in, under the Canadians it changed over to a fighter bomber. Yes, yeah, because we adopted the airplane and, and uh, we converted it into a bomber. We carried a, a giant boom cracker on a, on a centerline rack underneath the middle of the airplane and, and uh, we were, uh, now I'm being very facetious, but we were what I call a glorified United Parcel Service. Somebody would tell us where they wanted the boom cracker and we would deliver it. <laughs> and it's, it was a very mean thing, but uh, that was the business we were in. 